everyone, and welcome to Thomas Podcast. So I made a little mistake there. Live with my uni friend. Okay, so today my guests, yeah, we went, we met two decades ago, uh, back in 2005. All right, so nearly two decades. Okay, and we were at South Bank University. We studied film studies and video productions, I believe. All right. And I can't wait to see what she's been up to. The one thing I remember is her singing abilities. She had a beautiful voice. I think she, I think she still does. And also, I found out recently that she started to write. So I want to really catch up and see what she's been up to, as well as, you know, talking about what, you know, is in store for her. All right? I really can't wait to finally catch up i haven't seen much of her for a while so let's see if we can also um try to meet up yeah nice one i'm really excited yeah your friday evening and your weekend yeah I, I am definitely, all right? Honestly, I am. I love weekends so much. I love Saturdays or Sundays. Wow, spending time with my lovely, beautiful children and my family. Okay? Okay, yes, lovely. Hi, Josephine. Now, can you request to join me? I invited you. I just said she's joined, so... Let me invite her. Yeah, request to join. You know that camera at the bottom? Request to join. Yes. Hello, Josephine. Hi there. Hello. Give me a moment. Just trying to turn the camera around. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Is that in your, are you in your room? Yes, I can see your lovely room, the lovely lights. Yeah. Yay, I can see your face. How are you, Josephine? I can't hear you. I can't see your face for some reason. <sighs> Guess what? Sometimes it happens, but at the end, I will definitely show you. So don't worry. You're in good hands. I know. It's <laughs> so I'm going to be speaking to myself for this hour. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. Yes, I don't know why it does that. I'm going to be honest. I don't know why it does that. I'm very sorry about this. Yeah. But I know I love your lovely white earrings. Yes. They're actually my book, actually. I thought I'd showcase them today. Hopefully you can see oh. in the light. Oh. Oh. Yes, sir. we have so yes. much so much to talk about <laughs> really we're gonna come into that in a moment so first of all josephine so introduce yourself to us who are you what do you do so uh, yeah my name is josephine josephine daly um it's my writing name um what can i say I've, I've written and published a book so I am officially an author. Wow. Um, that was actually released a few years ago, and uh, um, I won't go too much into it right now. I'm sure that's what we're going to be talking about soon. Um, I am a mother of two beautiful young girls. Um, I say young, but they are big, big now. <laughs> we we can uh, talk to that. Don't worry. Yeah. And yeah, amazing. So we met at uni. Can you imagine nearly two decades ago? That is crazy. I don't know what that to is say. Actually crazy. Okay. So when you left uni, what have you been up to? Wow, that is, is that is a big question. That's a long time to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you, you were busy. You had children. Yeah. You started to work, perhaps. Yeah. One second. Do you know what? I'm still trying to sort out this screen because it's weird. Because you're not on the top, literally, I'm just like half of the screen here and I don't even know. Can you see my full screen? 
not fully. I want to see your whole face. Mm -hmm. that, that's better. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry, I guarantee you, when I finish with you, you're going to see it. It happens sometimes, which is annoying. I know. It's fine. It it's not that big. I'm just saying my age when, when I'm getting technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> we both did major studies, by the way. We it, yeah, yeah, like, don't have worry. a big old degree in this, so it's, it's all fun. <laughs> yeah, so after uni, um, uni, I was looking after my my eldest daughter now. Yeah. now. Working, bit of music, uh, um, life. Like <laughs> you know, the one thing I want to say to you, Josephine, is that you have a beautiful voice. Um, I remember <laughs> at uni, you were, you know, one of the videos that you, you made with your group, I remember you were singing live. I mean, I don't, have you, I don't even remember what, them, what one that was. It's, uh, it was one of the, you know, uh, the first year of uni, you know, when we were group, working as a group. Uh, one of your first um, uh, video with your group, I don't know, you were singing, oh, like wow. you were acting and then you were singing too i mean for us and i really i'm gonna say i was like this is this is sick <laughs> like you have an amazing voice wow, I, so. <laughs> I don't even remember what that was I, i'm surprised i even had the courage to do that <laughs> oh, listen, i usually keep was... it on the on the dl that i can no, sing no, and then... no no that was fantastic and you always did you always like had this gift of a beautiful voice uh yeah I I've been singing since since I was probably like well no since I did sing since five, six, I don't know. I've always I've always been from a young age I always used to write I used to write, write um poems and then and I would kind of realise that I could turn them into songs and so I kinda of went from there and then I'd be singing and writing. Yeah. And you know, you know, back in the day when we couldn't um we didn't have anything like um what's that called genius what's that lyric thing where it can tell you what all the lyrics say we don't we didn't have that back then we used to have to stop and start the tape and write down the lyrics yeah. <laughs> yes. that used to be me yeah but i have, I have to say I, I mean i've not said that in a bad way but i'm surprised you haven't really done something about singing because you're so talented what did you study uh film uh, f uh video production and film studies why that and not I, I don't know but somebody with that talent you should be i don't know in bridge school or something i don't know <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm think, I'm it's thinking. actually funny that you should say that because in the second year of uni i because when we started you you know before we actually started the course they said yeah. it was going to be a production yeah. course and then literally the day we started they're like actually now it's this and so i st stuck with it and the second year in um i actually went to our tutor and i was like you know what i want to change so i was going to do a drama i was going to do uh what was it performing arts and law joint uh yeah. degree yeah. and then they was like no no we're gonna get right into it now it's gonna get really like you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it now so i stay so who knows in another universe i might be doing performing arts never too late but i hope you enjoyed the course i mean i liked our group yeah like the people in it there were so many different personalities different ethnicities there was a lot of everything mm. some very memorable people um, <laughs> i'm gonna name one like tom for me it stood out a lot oh <laughs> yeah tom, tom, tom. Tom. yeah uh, i mean i love them gems i did mm -hmm. talk to her john dominic obviously i did the vlog with him i mean i really enjoyed the group that we had mm. I, I feel like we were quite close with like we didn't know each other but we were so sort of close i really like that so was that the reason why you stayed with us we feel like oh i'm gonna give you a go anyway <laughs> um yeah it was mainly that do you know what when i was that age i feel like um it was kind of drilled in me not to give up on things not to quit but i feel like the older i've got i've realized that there's certain things that sometimes it's better for you to quit not everything is like, like uh not everything is a weakness or a or a loss from you giving up in it if you get what i mean so maybe if this was another maybe years later i might have actually said you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna 
do it as a course, but um, I'm glad I stuck with it. I, I, I enjoy it. I don't regret the experience of uni, to be fair. But, yeah, um, yeah. So did you, did you take something from it as you left uni? Is that what started? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, for me, I really like the kind of theory side of, of it, like just looking at the, obviously we went into the kind of, there was a lot of Freud and like the reason why people like certain emotions are evoked from watching certain things and things like that, like <clears throat> that really interested me because I, I think I've always been quite a deep thinker about things and before uni, certain questions that I would ask or think to myself, I kind of felt a bit out of place or a bit like I'm just like, why am I thinking these things like what this this is like maybe a bit too deep but to me I was thinking like I just must be a weirdo but going to uni it shows that actually there's a lot of people out there that think like that as well and it's actually not it's not a yeah. bad yeah. thing I feel exactly the same I mean I didn't really know when I was in college before going uni I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do I know I like mm. to read. I know I like watching videos I know I like films and a teacher said to me yeah you should do this course so i'm like i don't know nothing like i have no experience like some people are already working at thing i, I have nothing mm. like just go into this with all these ideas but i have to say i took so much out of it like especially the research side, side of it yeah and being organized exactly what exactly you want to do so that really helped and i'm still in touch yeah. with tembi i don't know if you remember tembi mm -hmm. Do you know what? I'm so bad, but if, probably if I saw certain people, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know who it is. But there's a, like a handful of names that I remember because at the time when I was at uni, I don't think I was as involved maybe socially as everyone else because I was, as well as work, um, at uni, I was working. So mm -hmm. when most people were having their nice like student union time, I was working. I, I, <laughs> so, I, I'm just, I was working part time. But I'm actually, like, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Every every time, right? I was always on the run, going this, going yeah. there. It was, and I, I remember John, oh, let's go back to, and I'm like, I can't go anywhere with you guys. Oh, let's go to the pub. <laughs> we got I responsibilities. Can't. Exactly. I said, I have to go and work. I had a flat to pay. <laughs> yes. I was envious sometimes of those people. I'm like, you know what? Actually, I'm not because he's really, you know, helped me to be responsible. So when did you start the writing process? Because I remember looking updates about your book and everything and the everything that you accomplished as an author. So when did that journey started for you? So for my book, well, after my mum passed away in 2016, um, my kind of coping mechanism was writing, just writing down how I felt. Um, so I would write poems because that's kind of what I would do anyway. But I just wrote poems about how I was feeling in the time. and um a few years later i thought let me kind of develop them a little bit more because i wanted to write about my experience um for other people to kind of get a, an insight and also maybe if they're feeling or experiencing the same thing themselves and um, so i thought how can i kind of take what i've experienced and, and develop it into a book because i've never written a book before so i just kind of i started with my poems and then writing about how I felt at the time when I wrote them or what particular scenario I was going through when I was writing that or translating what the poem was about. Um, and that bit by bit kind of built my chapters in my book. Oh. And um, yeah, and then it kind of went from there. Fantastic. So let's, let's have a look at your book again. The title and everything, please. Mm -hmm. Life, the influence of things, <laughs> and then you die. Yes, well, yes, that's, life's that's a bitch, reality. and then you die. Very, yeah, I mean, it's that reality, but I like the fact is. that you managed to turn your pain. I mean, first of all, my condolences for your mom. It must have been hard for you, you know, mm. to turn you know, this pain into something beautiful. I read some samples and I really have to say you have, I mean, for me, I don't know, but being a singer and you have to come with your lyrics, you are already, you were already a writer in any way. So that was an easy process for you to, you know, transform into an author. How did you find this whole journey? 
I don't know if it was, it was, I guess maybe easy to get the start, um, to get myself kind of going a little bit, but to frame it into a, into a cohesive story to share with everyone else or, because it's not really, it's like, you can look, you can read this book, you don't have to read it from start to finish in chronological order, it can be like, oh, let me look at this chapter, I'll read this part or that part, like, but to to kind of get the structure of the book, I think it took a lot more than just me having written songs before, to be honest, because it was coming from more of a personal place. Whereas, I mean, songwriting and writing poems is very personal for me, but I suppose I had to make it readable for other people as well, so I put a little bit more into the thought process. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. And uh, I'm going to end our conversation. We have to speak about the lovely Sarah. Um, I mean, I don't know what to talk about because she was such a standard character. But I remember the two of you were very close and everything like that. Uh, did you guys manage to see each other sometimes after uni? Yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So can you please tell me why she always remained the same, this big personality? this big light presence in the room or she always like this after even after university or she come down a little bit <laughs> yeah she was she was definitely a character <laughs> i think everyone that met her didn't forget <laughs> yeah oh seriously that's nice would you be one day inspired to write something about sarah uh, um i think really the book that i've written already kind of encompasses any loss that someone's had so i don't think i'd write anything specific but um but yeah, I think I think my book itself kind of relays the feeling of any loss. Because it, you know, if we're going to write a book for every single person that passes away, I think I think um, I mean everyone experiences things differently as well with yeah. loss. But um, yeah, my book kind of covers. I don't know if I say covers bases. That sounds very really insensitive. No, 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 no. <laughs> it kind of I know it you. has a lot of that scope. I know what you mean. It's like we can all find some solace, I think, in uh, in your book. Would you? Are you planning to write another book one day, or you think like you know what? I've done one, and I've. Done I think I think thing. for me, this book was kind of like my way of getting everything out. It was very cathartic for me. I just wanted to get everything out and share how I felt. You know, raising my daughters I mean that year that my mum passed away I, I had my youngest daughter as well so I was literally dealing with a newborn baby and gr grief at the same time um, then working full time as well so it was very much like, like there was a lot going on at the time so that just when it came to I think because I started actually writing it in during lockdown so that was, was just a nice time for me to get everything off my chest um, so if I do write again I think I, I really like to write things that are helpful for other people so um, things that I have in mind for example my me and my daughter right my youngest daughter loves writing oh. she every day she's making up a book out of her she'll write and get like five pieces of paper put them together fold them up <laughs> and start wow. writing so I've inspired her I think oh. so I will be um, Oh. writing books with her i've already started one actually I've, well we've written it but we've got to do the illustrations but it's all going to be about kind of you know little different morals and stuff like that like whether it can be about saving money or you know treating people kind things like that so oh please keep this going this is fantastic how old is your your youngest daughter my youngest is seven and she's already has that author writer uh, yeah um, she loves it and my <laughs> eldest daughter is very good at drawing so she will probably illustrate some pictures as well this is such a wonderful story you <laughs> you inspire your daughters and look at that I've, I've, i feel like the three of you i've got a sense that the three of you are gonna do a lot more together that's so mm. fantastic to do something that you love with your children i mean please shout out to them if you see them give them a big hug and well done <laughs> i love that you are role model they are role models that's just why i'm doing what i'm doing i want a lot of people to see there's no excuse there's no mm -hmm. age limitation there's no okay you're working but you can still make something happen that's fantastic josephine i hope we're gonna meet each other i really do we need to find a way to have this 
you know, reunion. Yeah. I really miss all of you. And hopefully without children or without children, it doesn't matter, but we really need to meet up. And my last and final question for you, Josephine, thank you so much for your time, yeah. by the way, is what would, you say, what would you say to young people um, who are watching this? What would you say to inspire them to mm. follow their dreams? What would, mm. what would I say to inspire um, um, I would say it's very easy to get caught up in the everyday you know, working, 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 or just everything going on with life. Just like try to secure time for yourself to think, to, you know, to, it's very, very important to look after yourself, your mind, your body in order to push forward with, with anything that you need to do. It's okay to take a rest, you know, because I think I had to tell myself that a few times. Yeah. But <laughs> it off. Well done. You're totally right. It's worth to take a risk. You have to go for it. Whatever makes you happy, whatever you feel like you want to do. Yes, you're totally right. I want to say thank you so much, Josephine. We're going to keep in touch anyway. Hopefully, you know, when it's nice and summer and warm, we can meet up with the kids as well. So that'll be a pleasure of mine. Yeah, definitely. That'll be lovely. <laughs> and if anyone does want to buy my book, the link is in my uh, bio. Well. lovely so you're gonna share, share me that link as well so yeah. that i can also yeah i'll do that but one thing i know you know i love to read if you don't know <laughs> what i do so that's something that i definitely want to buy i love to read so that's something i'm gonna buy myself and i say a big thank you josephine for your time no I'll problem at all. thank you so much Thelma. pleasure bye have a lovely evening you too bye, bye.